Okay, I want to start lighting this guitar. And so to do that, we're gonna look at basic Arnold lights and see how those work and what they can do for us. The first thing I wanna do though is to just create a little backdrop for this guitar. Okay, there we go. We've got a basic studio backdrop set up for this. That's fine, just like that. Now let's start lighting it. With Arnold lights, we just go here and say lights, just like normal, but instead of photometric or standard or V-Ray, we go to Arnold. And you can see there's just one light here, which seems weird, but it's also awesome that all the lights for Arnold are just built into one light. So I can turn off the targeting for that and just make it not targeted so that it's just like that. I can also change it to various different kinds of lights, which is probably the coolest thing. Right now it's a basic rectangular area light called quad for Arnold, but you can also make it a point light, a distant light. Distant light is like a sun. It'd be kind of like a giant spotlight in a theater. All the light is coming at the same angle always. So it's a very distant point far away. The spot is more like this where it can fan out. These are not lights that we're unfamiliar with. The disc is the same as the rectangular, except it's circular shaped. Another area light, but with a disc shape. Cylinder, okay, you can have an actual cylinder light, like a fluorescent light bulb, sky dome, like a HDRI type of thing. Photometric, where you can add in a file to tell it exactly how to cast light, and a mesh, meaning we can take any object in here and assign it to here and make that into a light. Okay, so if we want to use accurate lights, I think what I would be using most of the time is either like a disc or a quad because these are area lights, right? So if it's a can light in the ceiling, it'd be more like a disc like this. If it's just a generic light, like a studio light, you might have a quad, a big box light type of thing. But the important thing with area light is that it's emitting light from this entire rectangle, right? Which will create nice soft shadows for you if you want them. If you want really crisp shadows, you can use either a really small quad or you can use a spotlight or a point light and make the source of the light very small. In this case, the source of the light is quite big. It's this whole rectangle here, which makes really soft shadows. And that is physically accurate. So within here, within the Arnold lights, you have basic settings that you'd be used to with lights. Let's just look over them real quick. First of all, though, let's take a look at how we can see these lights. So if we go to high quality lighting, put it to default shading. Okay, if we put it on default shading and high quality, we can kind of see how the light is working. A little funky here and obviously way too bright. So if we go into the light settings, we can turn that down. There's two things that control the intensity of the light. That's the intensity itself and then the exposure, which is a multiplier. Frankly, I don't understand why they need both of these. Exposure and f-stop value, which multiplies the intensity by two to the power of the f-stop. Okay, so this is like one to the sixth power. If you put it at one, okay, now we have a better representation of what the light's gonna look like. And actually, if we move the light around, you can see that shadow moving too. So it's like it's showing us the direction, but when it regenerates, it's showing how soft it can be, okay? So that's that soft shadow we're talking about. So you can see shadow casting all the way up to here, but it's very soft because the source is large. Now, you can actually change the spread on it so that it's more like zero, and then it would become more like a... Well, how do you describe that? It means it's casting light parallel to this line here when it's at zero, and more perpendicular to it when it's at one. So that means it's fanning out fully if the spread is at one. If it's at zero, it's basically doing a more direct light straight at that guitar. Okay, you can change the quad size here, the roundness and the soft edge. So this is like when it makes this edge soft, that that's the setting that controls this here. If you hover over each of these, it'll tell you what it does. The roundness is to round the corners. So square shape at zero, rounded corners to a disc shape at one. 
Okay, so if it's at one, then when this emits light, it's actually going to be rounding each of these corners. Let's actually look at active shade so we can see what this is all doing here. If you want to set up active shade so that it's rendering as you're doing things, you can do that by going to your render settings and go to here and say, well, production rendering mode is already on Arnold. If it's not, then you can set it there. And active shade mode is on, make sure that's to Arnold as well. And then you can say here, you can say active shade. Instead of just high quality, we can say active shade using Arnold. Okay, now it's, it's kind of actively rendering as we go around the viewport. So we can see how that light is affecting. I'm not sure if it'll show the soft edge and the roundness or if we'll be able to tell if the light is visible. It's not going to show us all that without actually rendering. But that's what those settings do. We can, of course, change the color. What I usually do is change it based on temperature. So 6500 is more like daylight, and a warm white light bulb inside is more like 3000. So this would make it very warm, like that. Let's turn up the intensity so we can see it better. So instead of using the multiplier, I'm just going to use the actual intensity. Okay, so you can see the shadow here is not super soft, but it is getting more and more soft as it goes farther away from the source. Of course, if we change the rectangle of that light, the size of the quad to two feet by two feet, it ups the intensity, the brightness, right? Because now there's a much larger light source, but also it makes that shadow a lot softer, even when it's close to the guitar. Now, let's see what happens if we put that spread to zero. There, that's a perfect example. So with active shade on, we can see what it does. Now, the light is coming directly perpendicular off of this plane here and parallel to this line only as a very enclosed. So the shadow becomes very, very sharp and you can actually see like a spotlight shining just onto that. So that's what that does. In most cases, we'll want it more close to one probably. So it's casting a nice soft light, especially in a studio setting like this. Okay, this is how much it contributes to all these different elements of your scene, render elements of your scene. I would recommend this just staying on one for all these, not touching any of these things. Of course, we want it to cast shadows. Atmospheric shadows, yes, meaning if there was some sort of volumetric light, it would be casting shadows through that, like fog or something. Okay, so those are the basic settings. I mean, these are all general light settings that all different lights have. But these Arnold lights have a lot of versatility built into them with basically these settings here and the ability to change it to different kinds of lights. So if we change this to a disc right now, we'll see that it just is now a disc and we can just change the radius of it. It's important to note that the radius does have an effect on the amount of light, right? So you can't just say like, oh, I always want my intensity to be the same thing because the size of the light comes into play. Okay, and you can really see that warm temperature showing through here. I want this intensity turned down a little bit. Oh, another thing is that it turned the exposure up for me automatically. Okay, there you go, that's cool. So what if we did this and then also created another light over here? We'll just copy it. We're doing this all in active shade right now, so it's not giving us a perfect representation of what we're gonna have in the final render, but it's giving us a very good idea. So what if this one was 6,500 and we turned it to a big old rectangle so it's just like a fill light on the back side of that guitar. And then we'll turn the intensity way down. Thinking in terms of studio lighting here, or at least trying to, you gotta think of yourself as a photographer that is setting up a virtual studio here. Okay, so see, you can see how that's just doing a soft fill of light onto the back side of that guitar right now. That's too much. That's too little. No, that's about right. Okay, so we'll let that active shade figure it out for a second. And uh, we're getting a very good example here of what these Arnold lights are capable of. It's pretty awesome. And we're also seeing we can kind of art direct a little bit. Like, for example, I don't like these big shadows coming across the head of the guitar up here and these being super dark. So I need to probably move the lights around so that it hits a little better up here. And this one probably as well, maybe needs to go further out so that it's not casting up at those so much. 
you can mess with this forever, but I just want to basically show what the Arnold lights are capable of and also kind of how to use active shade and your viewport to kind of figure out some of those things and really be an artist and start painting with your virtual lights to get the exact look and feel that you want for your project. Okay, so hopefully that really helps with the basics of Arnold lighting. I should have mentioned before we go on this one that if you want your active shade or your rendering or whatever to look real nice like this kind of clay material, this light middle gray material, then you might need to apply a standard material to everything so you don't get a bunch of wacky colors going on. It's just a nicer way to look at it. So if you just go to your material editor up here and apply basic materials to everything, we can go with the physical material, standard with 3ds Max. You can see that one's a little darker than what I had previously, but it does give you a nice, you can go even darker if you want, or lighter. But I find that if you apply some material, a basic material, it makes working out the lighting a lot better because then you're not getting a bunch of wacky colors that are throwing off your eye. So set the color something similar that helps you to work out the overall look and feel of your scene. You'll notice that this one has a little more reflection on it so you can see reflections in the background. And this is where you can actually see the reflections of the light, okay? So this would actually be a good way to see how the reflection of this light is affected by the settings. So with the quad, we have the soft edges. If we set those to zero, now you can see a major difference. The reflection is now crisp. If you set it to one, it's really, really soft. Okay, let's set the roundness to one. See if that works for us. Yeah, there you go. So now it's more like a disc light, okay? I actually like it with the soft edge of one or maybe something in between, but we don't need the roundness that high. Okay, so that is light settings. I recommend putting some sort of generic material on to figure out how you want the light to work in your scene and then start concentrating on materials and adjust lights as necessary. Hopefully you could have a good basis now of how these Arnold lights work and what the settings do.